What's going on, everybody? It is Brendan. Welcome back to Dad Planet. I am still waiting for this warm weather in Columbus, Ohio, but as chilly as it might be outside, it is always heating up inside the Goodwill bin. So I'm gonna take you to the bins again. We're actually gonna to go to the Goodwill bins and then very briefly, I'll take you to a retail store on a couple of very recent trips that I took where one of the garments that I found, if it is in fact real, and we're gonna take a very close look at it here towards the end, could be worth anywhere from four to $500 pre-owned. Pretty exciting stuff, let's get to it. Got a little bit of shoe footage for you. I haven't had any chance to really record, but I'm wearing the GoPro here. So uh, yeah, we've got a little bit going on right now. I have in my hand a pair of Ultra shoes, not those Nikes. I passed on those because the soles were a little bit beat up, but the Ultras are Escalante, either Escalante or Escalante. I'm not exactly sure. 1.5 and they are a woman's size 10 in gray. This is a pretty under the radar shoe brand. And you know, you're forever looking for that second shoe. So I do eventually find it and I have mine cleaned up and listed for $25, but these are, you know, between 25 and 45 for this shoe. It's a pretty popular, but really under the radar brand. So once I do eventually find that second shoe, I toss that in my carpet. You'll see me passing up a lot of things on this trip here. Uh, whether it's condition and there's you know a lot of Converse in here, I'm pretty I'm pretty heavy. I feel like on Converse right now, and the ones that were in these bins were not very clean. So a lot of the shoes that I pass up, although I do make a kind of a mistake here, and you will see it in just a second. But there's that second pair, so those end up going in my cart. But I pass up on a lot of stuff today. I was being very specific and sort of very peculiar, and I really didn't want to do a ton of cleaning, even those. Those ones were uh, just, you just had to throw them in the wash and they would tidy up quite nicely. So there is a pair coming up here and again, lots of Converse. I thought this was a pretty good pair of uh, Air Max until I touched them. They felt uh, like they were pretty waterlogged. So I passed up on those. They were just kind of like wet on the, in felt a little bit wet on the interior, which was weird because none of the other shoes felt like that. So I'm not really sure what happened there. But um, Perativa boots, just the wrong season for me. Some sandals, didn't know what those are. I made a mistake here. So this is a pair of Polo Ralph Lauren Conquest boots. I'll put comps on the screen. Those were really heavy. They Seriously, they felt like bricks. But even at 10 bucks, that would have been a good bolo at 55 to $60 for resale. So that was a mistake. I was probably going a little bit too quickly here. Perativas there that were beat up but not a ton else for me to speak of. And that bin had really just come out. So I moved over to the hats and I didn't find much here either. It's always a struggle trying to record this stuff when the hats and the bags come out. But this Cleveland Indians hat is a vintage logo seven hat. I will put comps on the screen for white vintage Cleveland Indians hats. They sell pretty well. And so I have that because it was in phenomenal condition. I don't know how it lasted that long and stayed that clean over all these years, but I have that listed for $70. So I'm happy with that find. I will take that all day long. It is baseball season. We are in full swing here, even though it's still really chilly in Ohio. And I mean, we're approaching May. It's, you never know what you're going to get weather-wise here. But nothing else going on in the hats and bags section. So we're going to move over to clothing. Beverly Hills Polo Club. I don't sell any of that. I don't, I mean, maybe that's a Bolo brand, but I, I pass it up on it quite often. And if, you know, if it's a bolo, let me know if I'm missing something. This though, this is definitely a bolo. So Off-White is a brand that was owned and operated by Virgil Abloh. He has now since passed away. He just passed away very suddenly in November. He was like the lead men's designer for Louis Vuitton. You've heard me speak about him before. This crew neck sweatshirt is a two to seven hot, two to $700 sweatshirt if it is real and when you have a very high-end fashion brand that's is always that uh chance that that is not so we're going to take a very close look at that towards the end of the video so i encourage you to stick with me here because we're going to scrutinize that garment to make sure that it is in fact a real one and if it is that is quite the home run so that was a very exciting find right there power up i don't know what power up is but i'm always looking for vintage t-shirts because they are very very cheap at about 40 to 50 cents and you can always find really good stuff here. Not really sure what brand this was. Crazy Eights, I think that's like a 
boys version of justice i'm not 100 percent sure but i don't see any value in that shirt and then a lot of this stuff is like just local local prints and and uh stuff that i really can't use so columbus I, this is just uh like a running shirt again another local thing no value there this is a brand of volcom corporal class pants obviously they are a uh, color gray size 31 they are very very light and first thing i like to do is you know check to make sure that there's not an absolute ton of fraying on the bottoms and these have a little bit but this actually is probably going to be a pretty easy 20 to 25 dollars and again because i'm paying by the pound at a buck 79 a pound in my location i'm going to take those because they were very very light as pants go and there were enough solds even in the gray color for me to pull the trigger on that so i really liked those and again that's just sort of my strategy when we're at the bins obviously the lighter the better when we're talking about buying by the pound. So I'm going to keep digging through here, Forever Summer, cute little onesie. Do not use onesie in your listings, by the way. That's a trademark term. You'll get a Vero for that. Just like Velcro, do not use onesie for those of you that do not know. This pair of pants felt nice, but I don't know what true spec is, and I don't think that they are a Bolo brand, so I passed on those as well. This is one that surprised me because this kind of felt like Lululemon quality. This was a really seemingly high quality um pullover here but there was no identifying brand or tag and i couldn't you know i'm trying to go quickly so i passed on it but geez it felt really good so every now and then you'll have a garment that surprises you um, but i passed on that because i couldn't identify it next is another pair of very light pants and these are men's they're prana and the style is sutra so they've got like a nice little drawstring they're almost like linen style again very light and this is a bolo as well, I believe. I saw a new pair that sold for 45 and you know, Prana Sutra pants, there's not a ton of them listed. So because they're so light, I, again, I still, I think I can get $20 for these, 20 to 25 bucks. So I'll get these photographed. Um, I don't have them listed quite yet, but by the pound, throw it in my cart, another light pair. I mean, it's almost, uh, it was gonna say this probably 75 cents they were so light so another good find for me even though that is a little bit more bread and butter than really what i'm looking for sundance i don't think that that is a bolo brand this is a garment that felt you know from a quality perspective it felt nicer but premise studio is not a bolo brand at all there's like a list to sell ratio of 11 to 1 on that brand stay away from it this is a nice coat here this nautica jacket i mean if this were like july or august i would have bought it but it's mid-level so i had to pass on that even though it looked like it was really nice and i bet that thing sells eventually but i'm good on mid-level brand coats uh, this find though this is a fantastic find so this is a uh, sanka set and they are a pair of joggers now you can get this brand at Saks Fifth avenue or nordstrom and a very very high quality some really good comps selling in like the 65 to 70 dollar range for this brand and you could again you touch it and feel it you kind of know right away that was a wonderful find as well so i was pretty excited to score these on you know kind of a lighter day so took off from the bins moved over to the retail store a couple of things i want to show you here this would have been a bolo if it wasn't twenty dollars it's a combo like binding machine you know i could have got probably fifty dollars for this but at twenty dollars and i really don't know how to test that i was like eh, that's a little bit steep for me i don't think i want to go through all that trouble trying to learn how that thing works so i passed on that all the stuff on that shelves i've already seen a million times over i beat this store to a pulp so this was the find of the day though at the retail locations this is a 311 silk screen poster that was done by mike martin for a concert that was in the 2000s at the newport music hall which is on the campus of the ohio state university it actually has a ticket stub signed i think maybe by one of the band members um, from a different concert there is a sold comp of, of one of these for 250 that was not framed and does not include the autographed uh ticket stubs so i have mine listed for 300 that was an insane insane find and then a pair of cycling shoes there uh you know maybe 20 bucks the off-white crew neck so let's take a look at the main label first the main label looks great like this is actually a pretty good label here but if you look at the crew neck collar i'm not sure what you call this little line here this little seam but if you look at the what i believe is the real version you see 
this seam here, but you also see it at the bottom. And on this garment, it's missing. I don't see that, but you do see it on the real one. And so that was my first red flag that this was not a real off-white crew neck. So that was my first one. Second one here, I'm gonna flip it over. On the screen print, this would be almost perfect. So the colors look off right here. The gradient looks off and it especially looks off right here. I'll get in a little bit closer. This looks sloppy and on the real one, it's very smooth. So this looks choppy right here. And there's other things that you could nitpick on this garment on the exterior, um, you know, the distance between the word and the graphic and the distance between these two words here. So lots of red flags there. And then I'm gonna show you the final one that uh, was kind of the nail in the coffin for me. If you flip the garment inside out, there should be an additional tag. Unfortunately on this piece, there isn't one. I couldn't find it anywhere. So this what this looks like on the inside. But where's the, where's the additional tag? Not only that, it doesn't even look like one was sewn in or like pulled off. It just is nowhere to be found. Not on, the, not on this side, not on the other side. So where's that extra tag? So when you kind of total it all up, unfortunately, I think this off-white hoodie is fake and it has to go into the trash. You win some and lose some, right? I mean, between the 311 poster and the song cassette joggers, I think I did pretty well and all the other things combined. So thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And then smash the like button if you liked what you saw or you learned something today. And then always consider becoming a member of the Dad Planet family by subscribing and hitting the bell notification icon so that you know every time I upload a video to YouTube. But that's it. That's all I have for you. Brennan here, Dad Planet. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.